that yet? I can be really loud, so it's okay if I'm not. Um, give it up here on table 2023. Give it up. Woo! Let's go. Um, so two things real quick. I talk really fast, and I have a lot of energy. So sorry. That's I can't change that. Um, I've known Matt forever. So he came in uh, to camp in 94. Um, I was a counselor. He was working at the camp. I was a counselor with one of the school groups. And... Um, you know, just kind of knew him for a little bit, kind of here or there. In the 2000s, he recruited me to work at camp. Um, you've heard camp a little bit. Uh, camp really changed my life, changed a lot of our lives. And, um, you know, so thanks to camp, we're all here, and we're in a room together, and we're just uh, rocking out the hero round table. So I'm thrilled to be here. This is an amazing event. Um, thank you all for having me. Thank you all for coming. Um, putting so many people in a room that want to make a difference, want to change. Let's go, right? That's why we're all here. We want to change. We want to make a difference. Um, and it's just, it's an incredible feeling. So I'm, I'm thrilled. I'm excited to be here. Let's, uh, let's get going. So um, when I first, I, I, all the way through Waterford schools, I was uh, born and raised through Waterford. And I um, they got my degree at Eastern Michigan. Any eagles in the house? Eastern Michigan? No? Couple? Okay. All right. Couple. Not very many. All right. Woo! Eastern. Um, so I got my degree and became a teacher in Waterford Schools, um, and it was hired in through the district that I was in education. That was really important to me. And my philosophy in education was that I wanted to give my students the best opportunities, the best equipment, the best programs, the best resources that I possibly could to be the best teacher for them. That was my philosophy. I wanted to just give them the best that I could. And my, my first encounter with a professional uh, teacher, he was getting up and he was talking, he was a professional development. And he said to me, you know, if I had better resources, could I be a better teacher? I could, but I, I don't have those resources, so I'm going to do the best I can. Um, you know, Dave yesterday made a great point you know, the, the, with the quote that says, um, you know, do what, what you have with what you can where you are. Right? I'm going to focus on the, the kind of what you have because that kind of bothered me. The same week, I went to my principal. And I gave them, uh, I, I, I had you know, some ideas for the program and different things, and, and then she gave me my budget. She gave me a $300 budget. $300. I said, is this for today? Is this for the week? Is this for the month? $300? $300. And they said, that's your yearly budget. You get $300. And I walk into my equipment room, you know, dust off some of the stuff from the 70s and the 60s and 70s. I'm thinking three hundred dollars. I could buy a set of balls. Uh, you know, the the dodge balls are one hundred twenty dollars for six. I can get a couple of those. Holy cow! So that same principal said, "I think you need to look at grants. I think you need to look at grants and bringing in more stuff for your program. It sounds like you really want to, you know, make a difference." So um, that was kind of uh, that was the first time I've ever heard of grants, and uh, you know, I, I didn't really know what to expect. But again, go back to that philosophy. I wanted to give my students the best. I wanted to give them the best, uh, the best equipment, the best opportunities, the best resources that I possibly could. Right. So I just asked myself, what did I need to do? What are some things I can look for to um, give my students the best uh, opportunities? And stuff like uh, you, you can't afford it. Stuff like questions of, of how do you make your program bigger and what do you do? Um, be prepared for people to say no. Be prepared to fail. Um, my largest fail as a grant was I wrote a pet grant. Probably a hundred hours, two point four million dollars, and I, I got rejected. It was, it was uh, about halfway through my career, um, and it, it it didn't really set me back. It just made me want to push more to get the things that I needed to get. All right, so be prepared. Be prepared to say. Be prepared for people to say no, and basically, um, rejection happens. It's going to happen over and over again. Um, I wrote the same grant I think four or five times before I got it, and. As this Hero Round Table has a team of people that are amazing, by the way, just awesome and just do amazing things, that's what you need for grants. It starts with the one person, and then you just keep on going, and you just keep on getting more people to your corner to get more things. So um, some of the grants took me a long time to get, but I'm so fortunate to be able to um, get the things we wanted to get for our programs. So I, I started to make a list. I started to make a list of all the things that I wanted for our program and, and in Waterford, all the stuff that I wanted to do, and stuff that we as physical educators wanted to do because it was a team, right? We all wanted to do the same goal and, and work hard. So some of the things we wanted were we wanted to get, um, we wanted to get rock walls for the elementaries. The rock, there was no rock walls in elementaries. Um, I wanted to get mountain bikes. Um, I wanted to get roller blades, lacrosse equipment. Uh, there's a lot of things. Obviously, you know, some of the 70s equipment, we needed to get some major upgrades. So we looked at uh, trying to overhaul all of the equipment. And I was told no for, that, for the first five, the first five or six. I was told no. You're, you're not going to get. You're not going to get bikes. 
You're not going to get heart rate monitors. You're not going to get rock walls. You're not going to be able to get these things. Okay? Um, people, teachers would tell me this. Principals would tell me this. You, you can't have those things. Don't tell me what I can't do. Tell me what I can. Don't tell me what I can't do. What, why, why can I not have these things? Why can I not have those five things? And in, for me, a yes could maybe only be one step away. From, you know, a, a no could only be one step away from a yes. Um, and the reason I say that is because everyone that's telling me no was told no from someone. Who was told no from someone. And, and we don't really know where that originates. So we need, to, we need to start asking more questions. We need to find out what, why are they telling me no? Why, why can't I have these things, right? Um, so bikes um, was for cost and insurance. Insurance, that was the reason when I started asking questions. Heart rate monitors, the, our technology won't, our technology in our district will not, you, you can't do heart rate monitors, our technology's not there. Rock walls, no way, insurance, too expensive, no way. Um, lacrosse was kind of an up and coming thing for equipment and the same thing, the same purposes, no, we can't do that. There's just, there's just, it's just too dangerous, there's, we can't, our insurance is gonna sell, tell you no way. So, okay, so then I'm, 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 I'm trying to figure out, okay, so they're, they're telling me no, don't tell me what I can't do, tell me what I can't. I talked to um, my, our security director, and he says, well, here's, here's our insurance company, and if you want to ask them some questions. So we start, you know, I start going around to different um, school districts, looking at what they have, looking at these rock walls. Okay, can you show me insurance? How, how are these going to work? Yes, it takes some time. It absolutely does. But for us to be able to, for me to go back to that philosophy and give my students the best education, I need to fight these barriers. These were barriers that were willing to be fought. Okay, so go in and start talking to the insurance companies and start talking to the to the um, to our big boss and they said well you know what we, we might be able to do the rock walls we might be able to do the rock walls okay let's start let's start with the rock walls right um, the elephant reference yesterday smart small chunks right so we're gonna we're gonna start to uh, we're gonna start to do the rock walls we're gonna look at the rock walls and we're gonna look at the safety and we're gonna look at the insurance policy and the company has their insurance and the comp this has the insurance my security director says yes but it, but we can't afford it we, we don't have the money for it so that's where grants come in. So I started writing grants. I started writing foundation grants. I started writing uh, for their physical education organization grants. And I started to kind of do small chunks and started to get two or three rock walls at a time. And um, up to this year, we have uh, gotten our last rock wall in the elementaries. All the elementaries have rock walls. It was a huge, huge thing. But we just see little bites at a time and you keep going. So very, very happy for that. Um, our infrastructure changed with our technology. And so I was talking to our, our technology director, and I said, here, here's what I have. Here's the, the proposal for the heart rate monitors, and this is why we can do all this stuff. And here's all the districts that are doing wonderful things with heart rate monitors. And um, they looked at the technology, and they looked at what it had to do, and it was just, a, it was just one little tweak on the, on the technology. And so they said, yeah, yeah, you can, you can do heart rate monitors. Yeah, you can have the heart rate monitors. So again, back right to the grants. Um, about 15, 20 minutes a day when I first started and then probably now it's probably about 10 minutes every other day once you start to write the grants you start to you know you get you get familiar with the people and the language and different things it doesn't take as long so um, the mountain bikes right mountain bikes in a, in a school district um, how many people have uh, mountain bikes in their school district mountain bikes yeah a couple of you maybe yeah um, this is one where everyone was telling me no Everyone was telling me no. Principals were telling me no. Um, the the higher ups were telling me no. No way you're going to be able to get bikes uh, and rollerblades for that matter. No way. Um, so the Eastern Michigan um, was doing a, uh, a program and they were kind of showing showcasing mountain bikes and I, I told my administration I wanted to go and check it out and they're kind of laughing at me like that's not going to happen but okay you can go. And so we went to went to these workshops and we started looking and we we went to the insurance company and said hey what about this. And now they've already kind of, they already know who I am from the mountain bikes, right? They already know who I am through the, uh, I'm sorry, the, the rock walls. They already know who I am. So here I am trying to figure out, okay, the next step is we need to, I, I want to get these mountain bikes. And so the insurance says, okay, we, your insurance is covered. You can do that. Security director says, yeah, the insurance says we're good. So then he goes and I get it written, takes the principal. Yep, they can do the mountain bikes. And for us to say that we have rock walls in our district, Rollerblades in our district, bikes in our district. Um, you know, these are all things that they're able to showcase for our district. And this is, this is a big advertising, a big plus for this. Um, so right before the, um, after the heart rate monitors, probably before the bikes, um, I had principals coming to me at this point saying, okay, what, what do you need to help? What do you need? What can we, what can we help you with? 
So the more that you write these, the more the money you bring into the district, the more people are going to come to your corner. More people are going to come and, and want to be a part of what you're doing. And that's kind of what I, what I figured out. Um, the more people in the, this team built, we built this team, it wasn't just me writing all these grants. It wasn't just me getting this equipment. We all as a team came together and said, what do we need to do and how do we need to bring these programs in? So um, all these things happen. The uh, uh, field trips, I'll touch on that one for a minute. This is awesome. So we've, I've taken students to Cleveland for Field to Play 60 events. Um, some students have got to go to uh, the Detroit uh, Ford Field and play on the field with some of the Lions. We got to do that as an elementary and a middle school trip. Um, we got to do a lot of things through grants. Field to Play 60 is one of them, UDIM is another one. It's just really, really big companies that were able to um, you know, let us do these goals, let us take over and uh, get all these wonderful things for our students. Okay, so um, I'm a big quote guy. You guys heard my, I already said the, don't tell me what I can't do, tell me what I can. Um, um, ever tried, ever failed, no matter, try again, fail better, fail, fail again, fail better. Um, if anyone tells you they haven't failed, I, I don't know, I, I, that's weird. I don't, I've, never, I've never seen that. Um, a $2.4 million prep grant, I failed. I failed, 100 hours. 100 hours wasted? I don't know if it's wasted, right? Um, because now I, it pushed me to get all those things. All the stuff that I wanted to do, that list that I already showed you, we got those things in Waterford. We have all those things now. And everyone told me no. And everyone told me you can't. Okay, well, tell me what I can't do. Tell me what we can't, right? That's what we're going to we're gonna focus on. Um, so I think uh, Dave made a reference to the Michael Jordan. Uh, he missed over 9,000 shots in his career. Um, and Michael Jordan is my, is my goat. Those of you LeBron fans, that's okay. I'm with you. But, but Michael Jordan's my goat. Um, and, you know, he shot. He missed over 9,000 shots. Was he a failure? Michael Jordan a failure? No. No, he succeeded. He won all these championships, MVPs. He was amazing. All right, so how do you write grants? How do you get into the meat and potatoes of, of how to write a grant? Um, where do you start, OK? Um, you can start with your principals. You can start with, if you're a business, you can start with your bosses. You can start with some of the programs. You can research grants for programs. I'm focusing on the schools because I'm a teacher, but a lot of these principals will carry on to you know, professional organizations or you know, whatever it is that you're trying to do for trying to get money. Fundraising, not just grants, but there's fundraising that we can do, um, all kinds of things. So for me, um, starting the grants, the process was just trying to find little ones, uh, $500, $1,000, $2,500. That's where, for me, it started. And my first year, um, my first two years of education, we brought in over $14,000 for equipment upgrades in the district, which was awesome. It was, yeah, it, was, it was incredible. And so as you start to do these things, people come to your corner. And they're like, wow, what can we do? Woo. All right. Lost it. We're back. All right. Um, so you need a team of people. You need people to help. Um, how many have like the best, who in here has the best grammar ever? Can write anything awesome? Yeah, I'm going to put my hand down. Right? No, I, I absolutely, I, grammar and punctuation, everyone will tell you. Matt teases me about that all the time. My grammar and punctuation is horrible. Um, so you have people that can read through your grants. I could get the ideas down there, but my grammar was not there. So um, I had, I'd have principals, and I would have co-teachers and colleagues that would say, hey, let me, don't, don't send that. <laughs> Do not send that, right? And so that's what happened. And then so people would help me and, and look at that, look at the grants over and over again. Um, use data when you can. Use um, the, the the grantors that are giving you the money, do some research on them. Look at their mission statement. Look at um, the, the support they've done in the community. You know, comment on those things in your grants. Um, for me, that's, that's really huge. Those are, that's really big things is that you're, you really want to focus on the grantors that are giving the money, um, and you want to make sure that you follow up. with the, When you get a grant, you want to follow up. Hey, thank you so much. Here's a picture of us using your equipment. Right? So it's really, really important that you, you know, pay it forward and you thank the people that are giving you money. That's huge. And they're, they're going to keep giving you money. So you want to keep you know, being there for them. Um, it's, it's about the students. Okay, I said that for me, like I said, my philosophy is I want to be this for the students. It, it does go, ultimately, it's all about the students. We want to make sure that we have the best resources for them. We have what they need. So we have to showcase that in the grants, that this is for students, and this is why, and this is the benefits, and this is what will happen. And you have to put that in your, in your uh, applications. Um, so I, I talked about a team. I talked about a team of people and principals, uh, other co-teachers, colleagues. Um, depending on the grants that you write, some of the mini grants you can write by yourself. But when you're writing grants on upwards of twenty-five to fifty to hundred thousand dollars, you have to have a team. 
They're going to want food service directors. They're going to want um, your security team directors. They're going to want principals. They're going to want more people than just one person. So um, as you start to write grants, um, your team is going to get bigger, just like in everything that we do, it gets bigger. Um, you want to make sure that you're staying positive, talking to the different people, the different uh, grantors about what you're doing and, and what you're doing in the communities. Um, that's really important. Okay. Um, so the, the biggest don'ts for, for grants would be um, don't, think, say, don't put in there for, for education grants. Don't put in, I need this for my curriculum. Big one, I, I lost, I think, three grants in my first year writing that. Because if you put, I need this for my curriculum, they're going to come back and say what? For your curriculum, then your school needs to pay for that, right? So that was the big one for me is that I learned to not say that. You can say this is going to aid in my curriculum. This is going to help our curriculum. But you don't want to just specifically say this is for curriculum because they're going to say, well, then that's, that's not us. So you don't want to do that. Um, we're poor. We can't afford it. That's not going to, that's not going to fly. Um, if you're trying to one school, that will help your, your case. But it's not going to. It's, you're saying we're poor. We can't afford it. They don't want to hear that. They want to hear all of the positive things of why they're giving you the money. That's what they want to know, right? They want to know those things. Um, keep a calendar, deadlines, that's important. Um, making sure that you know the timeline of when the grants are up, that's also very, very important. Um, so, kind of some takeaways from this presentation. I hope you, you can just be positive, go after it, find people that want to be like you, uh, that want to make a difference. Because that's going to be it's going to be a, a huge difference. Um, make sure that you um, look over some, have somebody look over your information that you're doing. Um, you know, please don't don't tell them what we can't have. Tell them what we can. Okay. No, maybe only one or two steps away from being a yes. Perseverance pays off. Absolutely. Um, you might get told no five, six, seven, eight times. Keep going. Keep pushing forward. Um, eventually, good things will happen. Um, oh, I lost my thought there. Okay, so um, thank you very much. Uh, I'm really excited about this con conference. There's so many wonderful people to take uh, take advantage of, and make sure you beat through the breaks. Um, but it's just thank you for being here. This is an amazing event. Thank you guys so much. Mm -hmm.